What's up guys, Meredith with ExtremeTerrain.com and today we're checking out the Barricade HD plate style full width front bumper with the winch mount and LED fog lights fitting all 2021 and newer Ford Broncos excluding the Raptor models. Now the factory front bumper doesn't really scream aggressive as far as looks are concerned and if that heavy duty appearance is what you're chasing for your build, this front bumper will do just that while also having the function to back it up. Now, whether you stick to the street or take your Bronco off-road, this bumper will benefit you in any scenario, thanks to the utility in the design, the fog lights to add more lighting performance, and the ability to customize this to your own personal preference. Now, as you can tell, this bumper is made with a pretty boxy design, which gives it that brute appearance, yet it is going to have more of a high clearance design with the angled ends and more compact build. Now, while it does offer you some clearance to scale obstacles very well, it is going to be a big enough bumper that will defend or protect the front end of your Bronco incredibly well. Now, within the design, this will also have many usable features, including recovery points. Now, this will have two welded D-ring mounts on the front and include a winch plate right here that's going to hold up to a 12,000 pound rated winch, leaving your options open and giving you some insurance if you do take your Bronco onto the dirt. Now this also boasts multiple lighting options with a light bar cutout right on that bull bar or overrider feature there. And you're also going to have two high powered LED cube lights in the kit to replace your fog lights. Now those in itself will increase your lighting performance significantly with the clear and concise beam pattern, which will be great if you need that extra help on darker nights and darker drives. Now this bumper will have a hardy construction to it made of a steel plating, which is more than capable of protecting the front end against whatever you encounter on the street or the trail. I am gonna call out that this is going to be a very heavy front bumper. So if you do come into contact with any obstacles, this is definitely uh, going to take the hit. Now on top to protect the steel underneath from any rusting from the elements, this is going to have a two stage epoxy pre-coating and a very fine textured black powder coat finish while simultaneously adding that heavy duty appearance. Now the lighting is on the same spectrum with their strength, which is essential with their positioning on the front bumper. Now those are gonna have an aluminum housing for good durability and heat dispersion, a clear polycarbonate lens on the front, which will have the ability to take a hit against any kick up or anything else, and a water and dust proof rating of IP67, which is helpful for the trail and of course those larger puddles on the street. And the best part of all is that this will come with provisions for all of your factory sensors, so you're not gonna have to sacrifice anything when upgrading to this front bumper. Now this will come in at around $1,300, which will put this right in the middle regarding the price point. Now this compared to others in the category will include everything that you need, whether you just want the ability to set up the lighting on the front and really want that look, or you want the added off-road advantages or all of the above. Now other choices that will save you a few bucks may not have everything that you see here, while this will save you compared to other more high performance options with extras that you may not need if you're not doing anything serious with your Bronco off-road. Now I think that that's gonna put this at a great middle ground and be a great investment when it comes to your Bronco. Now this is completely bolt on and it will not require any modifications in order to install it. Now the kit will also come with a wiring harness for the lighting uh, that is plug and play. So I am gonna give it a one out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter. Now it should take you only about two hours to get the job done and it is going to be much easier if you have an extra set of hands on deck to help you to align the bumper and lift the bumper because again, this is going to be pretty heavy. Now at this point, we can head over to our shop and check out a detailed breakdown on how to get this onto your Bronco at home. So that is gonna wrap it up for me. Let's go ahead and get into the install. The tools you'll need for this project are an impact gun and or a half inch drive ratchet, a 3 8 drive ratchet, a quarter inch drive ratchet, a 10 millimeter socket, a short 13, a deep 13 in quarter inch drive, a T40 Torx bit, a 13, a 15, a 16, and an 18 millimeter socket, a short 18 millimeter socket, a 10 and a 13 millimeter wrench, a trim panel removal tool, and some cable management supplies. Hi everyone, today we're installing a front bumper on our Bronco, so let's get started with the uninstall of the stock bumper. All right, first thing we need to do is remove this front skid plate here. 
And we've got four bolts, one here and one here on the front side, and then there's two more on the back side. So we'll use our 15 millimeter socket to remove those bolts. Next thing we're gonna do is remove these two trim pieces that go around our tow hooks. We've got one on this side and one on the driver's side. And to remove these, you're gonna need a trim removal tool. And we've got four plastic push pins, two on the bottom here, two right up next to the tow hook. We can pull those out and then we can pull the trim piece off. There are some plastic clips that go behind it to hold it to the bumper. But so we can just pull that straight out. Now with those out, just go ahead and grab your trim piece and pull it off. And now you can repeat that process for the other side. The next thing we're gonna do is disconnect a couple of wiring harnesses that go to our bumper uh, for the adaptive cruise control and for the parking sensors. And they're just inside this opening here on the driver's side. One of them is directly below the headlight. So we're just gonna reach inside push on the release clip, and then disconnect it from the harness. Now the other one is on the inside of this opening here, off to towards the center of the vehicle. Again, push in on the release clip and pull it out and get it disconnected. All right, now we're gonna remove these three bolts on the driver's side and then three more on the passenger side that actually hold the bumper to the vehicle. We're gonna be using our impact gun and a 15 millimeter socket to remove those bolts. And now you can do the same thing on the passenger side. Now, if you've got a buddy to help you lift this off, that's great. Otherwise, just be very careful as it is kind of heavy and should just be able to lift this right off the vehicle. Next thing we're gonna do is remove the nut plates that are behind the bumper mounting plate here to get that out of the way so that we can install the new mounting plates that come with the bumper. Now, these are held on by a couple of plastic nuts that obviously we can't get the camera back there to show you but there's one right in the middle here on the back side, and then there's another one over here in the corner. So all you're gonna do is just reach up behind it, find those plastic nuts, go ahead and unscrew them. And this is basically what they look like. So we move one here, down here in the corner. Once you get those out, then you can go ahead and slide the plate out and remove that plate. And do the same thing on the passenger side. Now, if your vehicle has adaptive cruise control, which ours does not, we've just got the cover here for it, then you're gonna have to unplug the shutter connector here and then remove the shutter assembly and remove the adaptive cruise control unit. And then what you're gonna do is feed the wiring harness down through the top of the shutter assembly inside and feed that down and back through the front of the, the shutter assembly here. Like I said, since we don't have it, we're not gonna worry about that right now. Now we can go ahead and get to the install of the bumper. All right, now we can go ahead and install our support brackets for the new bumper. So we've got an outer bracket and an inner bracket and they are both labeled for driver and passenger side. They're both stamped either with a D or with a P to let you know which side they go on. So we'll go ahead and using the longer bolt with a flat washer on it, we'll go ahead and insert that into the bracket here. And then we're gonna mount it through the frame rail with a, with a hole that's already pre-drilled for us. 
So now we can go ahead and get these installed. So now we'll put our outer bracket in first, and it's gonna be going through this hole right here in the frame rail. So we'll insert the bolt into the bracket, insert the bolt into the frame rail, and then just slightly through the other side. Now we'll go ahead and install our inner bracket. And then install a flat washer on the other side. And then a lock washer. And then the nut. Now we're not gonna tighten these down just yet until after we get the bumper installed and then we can adjust it for the height make sure it's all lined up correctly. So we're just gonna put it in finger tight right now. Now you can go ahead and repeat that process for the passenger side. Now at this point, if you've got the ACC module here, you can go ahead and reinstall the shutters. Now we're not gonna install the, the actual ACC module yet, but you can go ahead and reinstall the shutters. Next thing we're gonna do is remove the winch tray from the new bumper because it is attached to it for shipping purposes. And we'll go ahead and take that off and then we'll remove the parking sensors from the old bumper and get them installed in the new one. All right, to remove our winch tray, we've got four nuts here that we need to remove and we're gonna use our 18 millimeter socket to get those out of the way. All right, once you've got the nuts removed from the back side of the bumper, then go ahead and flip it over and you've got two more bolts here on the bottom of the tray. We'll go ahead and remove those as well. Now, yeah, once you've got those removed, go ahead and remove your bolt plates. And you can lift the winch tray right out of the bumper. Now we're gonna transfer over our parking sensors from our old bumper to our new bumper. To do that, we've kinda of gotta disassemble our old bumper first. So to do that, we've got three, bump, three bolts here at the bottom of our bumper. Now keep in mind that this bumper right now is sitting upside down on our table. So these three bolts at the bottom of our bumper need to come out. And then there's some along the top that have to come out. And then there's some bolts on the back side that need to come out as well. So we're gonna use our T40 Torx bit to remove these button head bolts on the front and on the top. And then we'll use a 13 millimeter socket to take out the ones on the back. So we'll get these three on the bottom first. Now we're gonna remove these four bolts here on this bracket here using our 13 millimeter socket and get our tow hook out of the way. And then we'll tackle getting the Torx bolts out as well. that out of the way, we can go ahead and remove our tow hook. Now on the front of the bumper, on the bottom top edge here, we've got four bolts that need to come out. And again, we're gonna use our, 40, our T40 Torx bit to get those out. Now we're gonna take out these two on the ends of the bumper here, leave the one on the far inside, and then we've got two here, two here, and two here to remove.
And now you can repeat that process for the other side. And now we can get the last two bolts out here for our brace at the very bottom of the bumper. Now with our three brackets all unbolted now, we can go ahead and use our trim removal tool to go ahead and separate the push clips from the brackets. So we'll just insert these under the edge of the push pins, pry up on them, and get those separated from the bracket. All right, now we'll do the same thing on our upper bracket wiring harness. And now you can repeat that process for the other side. Now we can go ahead and remove our parking sensors. To do that, there's two large tabs on the outside of the parking sensor here, what you want to do is spread those out and then push from the other side and just push the sensor out. So we're going to release the tab there, release it there, and push from the front of the bumper. Now you can repeat that whole process for the other three sensors. All right, now we're ready to install our parking sensors into our new bumper. But before we can do that, there's a couple things we need to take care of on the harness itself first. One, is we need to remove this silicone ring that goes around the parking sensor from the OEM bumper. And we're gonna replace it with this foam ring that's supplied in the kit. And there's also a foam spacer here and a locking ring to hold it into place on the new bumper. Now, when we apply these, we're not gonna actually remove the backing material off of these rings and the spacer itself because we're not keeping this bumper on our vehicle but we'll show you how to get that applied shortly so let's go ahead and get started now we're ready to run our sensor wiring harness through the bumper and get them into place so that we can go ahead and get this installed i would recommend that you start from the center of the bumper here on each end respectively run it through behind the brackets here and then there's an opening at the top of the bumper that you can feed this end wire, the end sensor through. And behind the bracket here, over to the sensor mounting point. And then we'll do the same thing for the other side. Run it through the top because It'll give you more flexibility in securing the harness to make sure that it stays out of the way and doesn't get damaged during the rest of the install. Now that we've got our wiring harness roughly in place, we can go ahead and get the sensors mounted where they need to be, and we'll put our spacers and our locking rings on as well. All right, so like I said earlier, we're going to remove this silicone ring that goes around the top of the sensor. And you can just lift that up like so, and it comes right off. Then what you're going to want to do is remove the backing material on this small foam spacer here. Place that side against the sensor to hold it in place. And then we can go ahead and install this into the mounting bracket. Now, because we're not leaving this on our vehicle, I'm not going to remove that because once it's on, it's on. So then you can go ahead, feed this in to the mounting bracket, all right, and it'll kind of snap into place. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place the thicker of the spacers on the back side of the sensor here, again, removing the backing material. And you can see we've got a flat edge and a rounded edge to match up with the sensor. So go ahead and put that into place. And then use one of the snap rings. 
again with the with the curved edge towards the outside of the sensor snap it over the mounting tabs and it's locked into place now you can repeat that whole process for the other three sensors all right so there are no built-in tabs to lock down your wiring harness to make sure that it stays out of the way and doesn't cause any interference so what we've done is we've gone to our local hardware store and purchased some of these cable tie downs that has a, a double-sided tape on it so what we're going to use are some zip ties that will feed through this and we can wrap that around our wiring harness to make sure that everything stays in place and it doesn't cause any problems later on. So when you do apply these, you want to make sure that everything is set where you want it and then go ahead and just peel off the backing material off of these tie downs. And then place it where you want the tie down to actually go. Now once you've got that in place, Go ahead and feed your zip tie through both sides, around the harness, and then just snug it up, all right? And you can go through and put these wherever you want them just to make sure everything is secure. I also recommend if, you're not, if you don't have fog lights on your vehicle, you still got the harness for it, go ahead and secure those as well, just to make sure that they stay out of the way and, and don't get damaged. Like I said, you can go ahead and place these wherever you feel that you need to put them and get everything secured. Now, if you have adaptive cruise control on your vehicle, you are going to need to mount that into the bumper here. To do that, the kit has come with a bracket to attach your module to. So you're going to use the two holes at the top and one at the bottom. And then it also comes with a cover to go over your module once you get it attached to the bracket. And once you do that, then you're gonna attach it down here in this area here on the bumper with the supplied hardware and get that into place. Now, once you've got that done, if you do not have parking sensors, the kit also comes with these plugs that you can put into the holes from the front side of the bumper where the sensors would be. They just plastic pieces that'll snap right into place. Now, if your bumper does not come with a set of lights like ours did, they do supply these mesh covers to go over the fog light cover. So you would just got these two ears here, there's two tabs here. So you slide this in like so and attach it using the supplied hardware. Like I said, we've got lights in our kit so we're going to go ahead and assemble the light to the bracket and then the bracket to the bumper. All right, so we're going to attach our bracket to our light first. And you'll notice that the bracket itself has an angle to it. You want to make sure that that angle is towards the front of the bumper. And we're going to slide that in on the side. And there's a hole on the, on the side of the light right there. So we use these two Allen head bolts, insert that into the threaded slot, and then tighten it down. Do the same thing for the other side. All right. And the kit also comes with a bolt, a lock washer, and a flat washer, and the nut as well. Now the bracket has a couple of ribs on the bottom here that will kind of hold the, the nut into place so you don't need a wrench to tighten it up. So we'll go ahead and place that over the tab right here. Put our nut into place. Grab our bolt with our two washers on it. And then once you've got it into place, go ahead and tighten down that bolt with a 13 millimeter socket. All right, and now you can go ahead and repeat that process 
for the other side. All right, now we're ready to install our bull bar on top. We've got two holes on each side that'll accept the two holes in the bottom of the bar. So we'll just line those up. And then using the eight millimeter button head bolts with a flat washer and a lock washer, and a flange nut on each side, we'll go ahead and get those attached. Now I do highly recommend that you have an extra set of hands to help hold things still while you're attaching the nuts to the bottom of the bolt. And insert the other one. And now you can install the two bolts on the other side. Now once you've got the bolts in, got everything lined up, you can tighten it down using the included Allen wrench and a 13 millimeter socket on the nut. And get that locked into place. Do the same procedure for the other three bolts. Now we can go ahead and install our mesh panel in our overrider hoop here. And you'll notice that the panel has a bend at the bottom of it, that's going to go at the bottom and line up with the bend in the overrider hoop, like so. Now to get this installed, because it is possible that you may want to put a light bar in here as well, so we've got to install a couple of brackets first. And they're going to go in these end slots here on the overrider bar. Now you'll notice that each of the brackets has a cutout on the top here, and that is gonna to go towards the front of the bar. So it's gonna go just like this in this section. Now the kit does come with a couple of bolts with the washers and nuts to go with them, so we'll go ahead and use those to put it on. So we'll go ahead and put our bolt through with the flat washer, through the bracket, and then put another flat washer on the back side, a lock washer, and one of the supplied nuts. And now we do the same thing for the other side. Now we go ahead and insert our mesh panel in between the two brackets and using the supplied hardware, just like attaching the brackets. All right, once you've got it into place, we go ahead and just line it up, make sure it's even across the side, make sure it's flat against the front, and then tighten everything up with a 13 millimeter socket and a 13 millimeter wrench. Now we're ready to install the single bolt plates in this outer hole here on the mounting bracket. And then we're gonna hold it in place using these plastic retainers just to keep them in place while we put it up to the vehicle. So we're just gonna slip this in from the back side of the bumper, attach one of the plastic retainers, and do the same thing for the other side. Now at this point, we're ready to put the bumper on the vehicle. So get a pair of hands to help you out lift this because it is very heavy. So we'll just lift it up, attach it with the bolts here and the nuts, and then we're ready to go. Now we're ready to install our winch tray. So we're gonna just slide this in. Now the clearances are pretty tight. So you need to make sure that it goes straight in. 
Now it may take a little bit of maneuvering to get that double bolt plate in because you're dealing with not only the winch plate, but the bumper, but the mounting plate as well. So you may have to move, maneuver things around a little bit to get that in. Now, once you get it in, you can go ahead and put your lock washer, your flat washer, and your nut on the back side, but don't tighten it down. We still have to do the other side. All right, now we can install the supplied 12, M12 bolts by 40 millimeters long, along with the lock washer and the flat washer in the two holes here on the side. And again, we're not gonna tighten these up because we still have to get the passenger side done and get everything lined up. And now you can repeat that whole process on the other side. All right, now that we've got all of our bolts tightened down and our bumper is secure, now we can go ahead and deal with the license plate bracket. If you live somewhere where it's required or you just want to put one on the front of your vehicle, this is where it's gonna go. And this is included in the kit. So it's gonna go right there. And it's gonna go behind once you install your, your winch, it's gonna go behind your cable guide, between the cable guide and the winch tray. So then you put the bolts in, tighten it down, and you're good to go. Now, also on the top of the bumper, right here behind the loop, there is a rubber plug on each side. Those are for your winch power cables. So you can go ahead and remove this, run your cables through there, get it hooked up to power, and you're good to go. So now that we've got our bumper completely installed, let's go ahead and tackle the lighting and get our new fog lights wired up. The first thing we need to do to get ready to hook up our lights is we need to remove this radiator cover here. And we're gonna use our trim removal tool and remove all these push pins here so that we can lift this cover up and get it out of the way so we can have access to run our wires through. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So we just lift under the top portion of the push clip and then get underneath it and lift it all the way out. And once you've got all your push clips removed, I recommend that you go ahead and remove this inlet for your air intake simply by lifting it up. Now you can just lift that cover up and get it out of the way. All right, now as you can see, we've got quite a wiring harness here. We've got a relay attached to it. It's got an inline fuse. It's got power and ground wires. Uh, it's got a switch and it's got a couple of plugs to actually plug into the lights. Now I use can choose to wire this any way that you want to. I'm just gonna show you one way to get this done and get things working for you. So let's go ahead and get started and start running these wires. So we're gonna take our plugs and we're gonna run them down right here in front of the core support for the radiator and next to the headlight. There's an opening that goes straight through which will give us great access to the plugs on the lights on both sides of the car. So we're just gonna feed these down through and then we can just pull them out from the bottom of the vehicle. All right, as you can see, I've got the plugs run down alongside the headlight there. So we're gonna go ahead and connect one of them to the driver's side. And it doesn't matter which one because they're both running off of one switch anyway. So we'll just go ahead and plug this in, make sure that the locking mechanism latches on there. And the other one, we're gonna run over to the passenger side and what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this through the back side of the bumper, through the brackets, and then we'll secure it with zip ties to the wiring harness that's in there for the parking sensors. 
just to make sure that it stays out of the way and we don't have any issues with uh, interference with anything. So let's go ahead and get that run. So there is an opening at the bottom of the bracket here on the bumper that you can feed this harness through and that'll keep it out of the way of everything else. And as you can see, I've got it right here. So we're just gonna pull this through and run it along the bottom of the bumper behind the other bracket. And then we're gonna feed the wire from the light itself behind the bracket as well. Then we'll go ahead and plug those together. Make sure they snap into place. And then, like I said, this is running right along the wire harness for the parking sensor, so you can put some zip ties in there to keep it all nice and secure. Now we can go back up top and run the rest of the wires. So now we've pulled up all the slack from the wiring harness to the lights. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up and tuck it down here in the corner of the engine compartment just to get the excess wire out of the way. Now, if you've got a Bronco like what we've got that's already pre-wired with auxiliary switches on the inside, then you'll have this set of wires right back here next to the brake booster that you can tap into for the power for the switch. That's one way to hook it up. Another way would be to use the power and ground that's on the harness for the lights already. And what you can do, is you can attach the red wire to the positive. You can do the ground cable anywhere you want. We'll just go ahead and hook it up to the battery right here once we get the switch run. Now, if you choose to run the switch through the cabin and operate the lights with this switch, there is a grommet, a large grommet probably about three to four inches in diameter, right next to the brake booster. What you could do is make a slice in that grommet, being careful, of course, not to cut any wires that are already there, feed the switch through into the cabin, and locate this switch anywhere that you choose. Now, since we're not making this a permanent addition to our vehicle, we're not going to actually cut the grommet we're going to just push it out of the way and feed this through in the same location. And then we'll hook it up, we'll attach it to the dash once we get inside. So let's go ahead and get that done. All right, so here's our grommet right here, like I said, next to the power brake booster. Now, if you're doing this permanently to your vehicle, you can go ahead and make a slice in there big enough to get your switch through and then seal it up with either some clear silicone uh, or some liquid rubber, something like that. Like I said, since we're not making it permanent, we're just gonna push it out of the way and then feed our switch through the opening. Now, once you've got that fed through, you can go ahead and get in the cabin and we'll pull it up to the dash and get it attached up there. All right, now once you've got your switch pushed into the cabin, we can go ahead and get inside, pull the cable through and put it where we want to attach it on the dash. All right, now our switch came through. It's right here in the corner of the, of the dash area. So we're just gonna pull that through till we've got enough room to, pop, to mount this on the dash where we want. Now what we're gonna do, just to keep it out of the way, is we're gonna run it up behind this dash panel right here at the bottom, right up to underneath the steering column, and we'll mount it on the dash right here. So we're just gonna feed this up, like so. And then as you can see, it's got a double-sided tape on the back side of it. So we'll peel that off, and we're just gonna mount it on the dash right here underneath the headlight switch. All right, now you can also make sure underneath that the cable is not in the way of any of your, your pedals or any heat sources or anything like that. And now we can go back into the engine compartment and get it all hooked up. All right, now we can go ahead and hook up our power and our ground. Now what we've decided to do is use this stud right here on our battery connector to go ahead and connect our red wire. Now if you choose to do that, you will have to source a nut as well. So we'll go ahead and get that connected. 
put our nut on, and tighten it down with our 10 millimeter socket. So we'll remove the nut on the negative side of our battery cable here. Again, that's using a 10 millimeter socket. Put our wire down, put the nut back on, and tighten it down. Now once we've got everything all hooked up, what you can do is just gather up all the excess wire here, put a zip tie around it, and then what we're gonna do, we're just gonna tuck it down here in the corner to get it out of the way. You can find your own position of what you wanna do with it. Also, the relay. You can, you can attach the relay as well. You'll probably have to drill a hole or zip tie it to something here. We're, like I said, we're not making it permanent to our vehicle, so we're just gonna let it hang right there. And with that, now we can go ahead and put the cover back over our radiator and move on to the splash pan underneath. All right, now we'll lay our, splat, our radiator cover back into place. And then we'll secure it with the original push pins. Attach our air inlet. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the two bolts that go in the back of our splash pan here and we're gonna get those started. Now once they're started, we can go ahead and slip the back side in on top of those washers, and then we can go ahead and install our front bolts. Now the front bolts will attach to the brackets that we installed for our new bumper. Now, once we've got them in, we can go ahead and tighten them down using our 15 millimeter socket. And that wraps up our review and install of the Barricade HD plate style full width front bumper with winch mount and LED fog lights for your 21 to 23 Bronco, excluding Raptor. Thanks for watching and remember, for all things Bronco, Keep it right here at ExtremeTerrain.com.